Kruti Joshi. I am going to take the video lecture today on the topic which is classification and isolation of protein. So basically proteins plays a very very important role in each and every function of our body. Not in our body but in each and every living organism's body. So here we need to understand that how the particular classification of protein plays a very very important role. So here the classification of protein will be done on different different bases because we have a huge number of proteins. So we have classified them depending upon certain factors. So we have to make sure that which factor will play its role where and depending upon that we have classified it into different parts. So the first one, the first protein classification will be done based on chemical composition. So based on the chemical composition of protein, proteins can be divided into two main classes. Number one, simple. Number two, conjugated. So here, let's talk about first which is known as simple proteins which is also known as homoproteins. They are made up of only amino acids. The examples of homoproteins or examples of simple proteins are plasma, albumin, collagen and keratin. So they are the basic proteins which are generally available everywhere as we all know that albumin, collagen and keratin. It is normally available in our hair, in our skin, nails, etc. Okay. Examples are egg albumin, arginine, glycine, right? Wheat and rice also contain glutenins. So basically that is also one or another type of or it contains glycine, right? It contains one type of protein which is known as simple protein in general. Second one which is known as conjugated protein. Now sometimes they are also known as heteroproteins. Okay. We will call it as a heteroprotein. So we can divide actually into two types. Homoproteins and heteroproteins. Homoproteins are actually the simple proteins. While heteroproteins are complex proteins or it will also be known as conjugated proteins right so this proteins are generally or they contain in that structure a non protein portion okay so it is a complex protein so we can say that it will be conjugated or it will be matched or mixed with another non protein portions also so protein plus non protein combines with each other and forms conjugated protein. Three examples we can take here like glycoproteins, we will have chromoproteins and we will have phosphoproteins. Okay? Glycoproteins, chromoproteins as well as phosphoproteins. So these three are known as conjugated protein or heteroproteins. Next is glycoproteins. So they are the proteins that covalently bind one or more carbohydrate units to the polypeptide backbone. Okay. Now what do you understand by polypeptide backbone? So peptide is basically different types or combinations of proteins and that proteins combines with each other and they will be again or they will combine with certain carbohydrate units and that carbohydrate units and proteins combines with each other and forms glycoproteins okay so they generally forms or unites together to form polypeptide backbone okay which is very important backbone in our body 
Typically, the polypeptide branches consist of not more than 15 to 20 carbohydrate units where you can find glucose, mannose and acetyl glucosamine that is also known as GL GLC, NAC or NAG and N-acetyl neuraminic acid which is also known as NEU5AC or NANA. Okay? These are the names of different types of peptides and that peptides combines with each other and creates a long one which is known as polypeptide. Okay? So here that polypeptide it consists of carbs plus protein together. So they are carbohydrate plus protein combination. Now let's take a look on examples of glycoproteins. So glycoproteins like we can take an example of glycophorin which is the best known among erythrocyte membrane glycoproteins. Erythrocytes makes a combination or it is present in our blood and it is known as or it is one of the best among that membrane glycoproteins. Next is fibronectin. So fibronectin that anchors the cells to the extracellular matrix through interactions on one side with collagen or other fibrous proteins while on the other side with cell membranes with all blood plasma proteins except albumin, except immunoglobulins or antibodies. Our next type here is chromoproteins. So chromoproteins are the proteins that contain colored prosthetic groups. They contain colored prosthetic groups. The typical examples of chromoproteins are hemoglobin, myoglobin which bind respectively 1 and 4 heme groups together. Chlorophylls which bind a porphyrin ring with a magnesium atom at its center. So as you can see this here, it combines with magnesium and protein. So protein plus carbohydrates and magnesium. So they forms a particular kind of backbone or they forms a typical type of structure in that particular hemoglobin or in that particular chrome. Our next type of protein is phosphoprotein, right? So phosphoproteins are the proteins that bind phosphoric acid to serine and to 309 residues. Generally, they have a structural function such as tooth dentine or reserve function such as milk caseins and egg yolk phosphatin. So in general condition they will be there in such kind of different different places. Now our next classification is the protein classification based on molecular shape. Okay, so based on the molecular shape of that protein we can divide firstly or we can classify the protein on the first basis which is fibrous protein. Okay, so fibrous proteins have primarily mechanical and structural functions. They provide support to the cells as well as the whole organism. These proteins are insoluble in water as they contain both internally and on their surface many hydrophobic amino acids. The presence on the surface of hydrophobic amino acid 
facilitates their packaging into very complex supramolecular structures. In this regard, it should be noted that their polypeptide chains form long filaments or sheets where in most cases only one type of secondary structure that repeats itself is found. Our next type or we can take different examples here. That first example is keratins. So keratins constitute almost the entire dry weight of nails, of claws, of beak, hooves, horns, hair, wool and a large part of the outer layer of the skin. Second example elastin. So this protein provides elasticity to the skin and blood vessels. A consequence of its random coiled structure that differs from the structure of the alpha keratins and collagens. Most of the proteins belongs to this particular class which are known as globular proteins. So our next type of protein here will be globular proteins. Most of the proteins belong to this class. They have a compact and more or less spherical structure, more complex structure than that of any fibrous proteins. In this regard, motifs, domains, tertiary and quaternary structures are found in addition to the secondary structures here. They generally soluble in water but can also be found inserted into biological membranes which are known as transmembrane proteins. Thus in hydrophobic environment. So in general they much more be there in hydrophobic environments. Okay. Unlike fibrous proteins that they have here structural and mechanical functions, they act as enzymes, they act as hormones, they act as membrane transporters as well as membrane receptors, they act as transporters of triglycerides of or transportation of fatty acids, they play an active role in transportation of oxygen in the blood, they are generally available in grain and legume storage proteins. We can take several examples of globular proteins here. So myoglobin, hemoglobin, cytochromes, etc. are considered as globular protein. Now next is protein classification based on biological functions. So the multitude of functions that proteins perform is the consequence of both the folding of the polypeptide chain. Therefore, of their three-dimensional structure and the presence of many different functional groups in the amino acid side chains such as thiols, alcohols, thioethers, carboxamides, carboxylic acids and different basic groups. So they please or role as enzymes which are also known as biochemical catalysts in living organisms. Almost all reactions are catalyzed by specific proteins called enzymes and they have a high catalytic power increasing the rate of reaction. Therefore life as we all know that we could not exist without their facilitating actions and almost all known enzymes and in the human body, they are thousand are proteins except some catalytic RNA molecules called ribozymes, that is ribonucleic acid enzymes. Second one is transport proteins. So many small molecules like organic and inorganic are transported in the bloodstream and extracellular fluids across the cell membranes and inside the cells from one compartment to another compartment by specific proteins and they are known as transport proteins. We can take an examples of hemoglobin that carries oxygen, 
fatty acid binding proteins that is the proteins which are involved in intracellular transport of fatty acids. The next type of protein that we will have here is storage protein. Okay. So what is the work of storage protein? So they are used to store different things. We can take an example here like ferritin that stores iron intracellularly in non-toxic form. For an example, milk caseins that act as a reserve of amino acids for the milk. Right? Then we will have here mechanical and structural proteins. So proteins have a pivotal role in stabilization of many structures. Right? Certain examples are alpha carotenes, collagen and elastin. The same cytoskeletal system, the scaffold of the cell is made up of proteins. They are responsible among others for movement, for the contraction of the muscle fibers of which myosin is the main component, right? So they actually plays various roles in various ways. Then we will have here hormones. Many hormones are proteins and they are regulatory molecules which are involved in control of many cellular functions from metabolism to reproduction, for an example insulin. For an example, glucogen, for an example, thyroid stimulating hormone which is also known as TSH. Now after classification, we will move to the isolation of protein. So isolation of proteins generally or proteins are generally occurs naturally in living organisms which are isolated from natural resources. Animal tissues or plant seeds are treated with proper solvent which dissolves the protein. The solvent used for isolation is generally water or 10% NaCl solution or 1% NaCO3 and we can even use 0.1% NaOH solution here. Dissolved protein is then precipitated by suitable reagent like ethanol, ammonium or magnesium sulfate or phosphoric acid and then the mixture of proteins are separated by column chromatographic technique so that we get different types of proteins segregated or separated right and after that we can use them and we can even identify them this is all for this session next we will see in our next session Thank you so much.